Hi, I'm Sarah Toussaint, an investor with North Carolina Courage. I'm Kiki Pickett, and I'm a player for North Carolina Courage. I'm Deanna Ordonez, and I play with North Carolina Courage. I'm excited to be here with you both. Um, I remember when I was first really paying attention to NWSL, this was probably 2018, um, I was actually pretty surprised. I was like, I don't see a lot of Latinas here. Where are they? And so I'm super excited to have you two as part of the North Carolina Courage. And I'm just curious if you'd like to share a little bit about like your heritage and where you come from and like how you identify as Latina. So my mom was born in Mexico so and African-American, so mm -hmm. Mexican and African-American. So that combination is pretty a big deal in my identity that I brought up with those roots and always had a great time with my family and it's kind of also difficult in this day and age to identify as two different things mm -hmm. um, because definitely my skin tells a different story but I'm glad I'm here to share my story with you guys. My mom wasn't born in Mexico but um, her parents were and she's Mexican um, and my dad is from Ecuador mm -hmm. in South America. Kind of same thing with the family, you know, big family um, and it was just so fun to like take trips to Ecuador and like visit my family and like um, my grandparents like only speak Spanish, so just like things like that that have always been a part of my life. It's just nice to, you know, get to do things like this and like sit down and talk about where you come from. Because I think, especially like in college and things, like when you move around a lot, you kind of get less and less of, you know, that home feeling and like people that you are that you identify with. So I'm the odd one out, and I'm not Mexican. Um, I'm Puerto Rican and Palestinian, so I totally get the dual identity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so Puerto Rican, Palestinian, but raised in a Mexican neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I had the uh, the joy of meeting your mom, and I had to show her my uh, my Mexico uh, loyalty uh, card. I'm, uh, I root for Mexico, which is why I was really excited yeah. that we had Diana. Yeah. <laughs> There's, so I'm like, yes! Of, of course I support any of the courage players with whatever, whatever national team they play for. But yes, Mexico is the one I feel closest. I mean, yeah. like, when I go hard for it, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, so you are Mexican mm -hmm. and you're African American. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever been asked or have you thought about yourself as like Afro Latina? Or do you say, I'm Mexican, I'm African American? So, the only time where I have to like really ponder that is mm -hmm. when you have to do like the census. Oh, God. And yes. it's just like, okay, you choose one or one or the other. Yeah. Like that was like before. And I would always, I would mainly identify as African American because that's how people see myself and that's based off of other people's perspectives, that's how I have to see myself as well. It wasn't until there's like another category that says, are you Hispanic? Mm -hmm. And then it'll do like, what category is Hispanic? So I love that. I was just like, there's a lot more to me than everybody ever sees. And hopefully I can share that story or, you know, bring my mom along and yeah. she'll help me to share that story. So I think that was really helps with the dual yeah. identity. Yeah, that census, you feel, I mean, there, there are literally boxes you're checking off. You literally. Literally boxes checking off. And you're just like, ah. And, you know, I, I get it. I get mm -hmm. that part. Even though on the, my, my dad, um, uh, you know, he's, he's fairly, you know, he's Middle Eastern, but he's got a darker complexion too. But, you know, we're, in some ways I feel like I'm forced to check off the white box, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and then it's like, okay, then I've got the Latina, and then sometimes I mark other, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, it just depends on my form. <laughs> but it's like a, a whole mental, like, exercise to go through mm -hmm. with, yeah. with just, like, this thing, right? Yeah. So. Because it's the difference between, like, self-identity, mm -hmm. what I oh, identify, or what yeah. other people identify me as. Yeah. And so you might see a different person than I would tell you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like another hard distinction between those type of situations. Yeah. Do you think, um, you know, just based on, well, this is what I know about NWSL fans, like they are like really knowledgeable. Do you mm -hmm. think anybody's surprised to find out? Oh, he pays for Mexico? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. <laughs> you know, I do follow you guys on Instagram and mm -hmm. there was a post, a really sweet post that you had talked about your abuela. Yeah. And, and so I was like, I was like, all right, she's, she's, you know, and I never assume, right? Because I'm uh, Puerto Rico. We have, you know, a little, you know, all, all the the pigmentation you can think of there for sure. But yeah. when I saw that, I was like, yeah, she's Latina. Like yeah. that's awesome. You know, that for got sure. me really excited. I just want to give a shout out. It's my grandma's birthday today. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> so it's good to be here. Oh, yeah. how wonderful! But she passed away almost. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we're gonna. No, Sorry, it's okay. Mom. It's okay, Nana. It's okay. I asked your mom if you had gone to Mexico before. I have, but I can't remember. I think it's really special for for that to happen, right? Even you know, I think it, it when you have that, even even if you're little, you're like, I know my roots are there. Mm -hmm. And exactly. that's like super special. And so. my mother and I always talk about going back, yeah. and to the point where we're like, 
just being able to remember that feeling or yeah. just to see yeah. where she's come from and like how she's come a long way to be here for me. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. Or no, it could be part of this conversation, <laughs> right? Just like the journey of like our parents, mm -hmm. right? What they, what they had to do to, to get here. In some ways, like my mom coming from Puerto Rico was pretty easy. She's a US citizen, you know, there's no yeah. hardship, although people today still don't know Puerto Ricans are American citizens. Yeah. So, <laughs> You know, another education. I know lesson. they're like, yeah, this is a moment <laughs> for that. And then, Diana, like, all right, so mom's Mexican, mm -hmm. dad's from Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Like, any, you know, in terms of, and you play for the national Mexican national mm -hmm. team, and I know you were also called up for U.S., right? So yeah. you've got lots of dynamics <laughs> at play here. Yeah. So tell, I mean, and you know, when I, I also had the joy of meeting your parents mm -hmm. in Monterrey day, who are like, oh, and your brother too, who are like so fun and <laughs> amazing you. people. Um, but I just love to see like how, as an Ecuadorian, like how proud he was mm -hmm. or is of you, yeah. right? So like, what was that conversation like? Or was it like, like no, yeah. like you, you play for Mexico. Well, <laughs> it was actually really interesting because when I was younger, I was like diehard Ecuador fan. Like that's oh, just, I was just like a daddy's girl. And like, I just wanted to do what he was doing, what my brothers were doing and like, when Ecuador would play against Mexico, my mom would be the only one oh, in a Mexico oh, jersey. Really? And there's like pictures, like our whole family's wearing Ecuador jerseys, me included. And she's like singled out. And I was like, oh, never, never, oh, never rooted for Mexico. <laughs> I was so against it. And then, no yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know if we I, want this to get out, by the way. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of the story. It's a part of the story. It makes it That's better. That's true. That's true. Um, Truth is important. Yeah. But once you know, the national team stuff kind of started. We realized that, you know, I did have an opportunity to play in both places. So I got my Mexican passport when I was like 15 or 16 and just kind of like waited on the opportunity to present itself and think about like when the right time would be if I ever wanted to switch. It wasn't like when I got it, I knew I wanted to go. I, I actually really did want to stay in the US and obviously every little girl in America, it's the dream, you know, play for the US national team. But um, once I, I got drafted and I just sat down with my parents for a while and we talked about it for a long time and it just seemed like a good time and like the best option for me. And yeah, like you said, the support and the pride that he shows is, he's come a long way. <laughs> If it wasn't if it wasn't me, he would never. He would never put on Mexico jersey. Mexico jersey. No, but yeah, my mom like makes fun of him because it's his last name on the back of a Mexico jersey. But That's yeah, hilarious. it's been. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it was a pretty tough decision, but I mean, I feel you guys with the grandmas because my mom's mom, she passed like a little over a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and she was like a huge influence in like making that decision. Even though I did it once she was already gone, like yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just. It's really nice when I do get to go to camps and I get to represent Mexico. It's like I do it for my grandparents and for that side of my family. And it's really nice to embrace that and obviously just like remember them and honor them in that way. I think it makes it that much more special. So that's been like a really cool part of switching the play for Mexico and just like getting back in touch with that part of myself that kind of gets lost along the way, like I said before. Yeah. It's beautiful and it's just how much, you know, our um, you know ancestors like really influence us, mm -hmm. right? Whether they're here, or whether they're not, like it's a big part mm -hmm. of you know who we are today. And I think a lot of people can see that, but I think you know when you're in the U.S. and you come from you know a different background, it's even mm -hmm. more um, prevalent. So between the two um, groups, so I've I've felt this throughout different stages of my life. So I'm curious about yours. Like at any point in your life, and you're still both fairly young, mm -hmm. right? You know, have you ever felt either more Ecuadorian or more Mexican? I would say like when I was younger, I was like, I'm Ecuadorian. Like that was like my whole like distinction for that was that my dad was born in Ecuador. My mom wasn't born in Mexico. And again, I was just so through and through for whatever reason. I just really thought I was Ecuadorian. And now, you know, I have my passport. I'm on the team. Like I'm way more. Like, I'm like, now I'm like, I'm definitely both. But like I now I'm, my my loyalty lies in Mexico now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. OK, OK. What about you, Kiki? Yeah, mine's a little different. I, yeah. I would just say, I think, just mainly American. Yeah. Just in, yeah. in a sense of just remembering where my roots are from, though. Because mm -hmm. uh, also, my dad was from the Bronx, yeah. New York. Yeah. So there's also that side of me as well. So I usually honor both of them, go visit their side of the family, hopefully get to visit Mexico as well. Yeah. But I really didn't feel like I had to choose one yeah. or another because they're both a part of me. Yeah. And so if I was able to embrace both sides, no one can really tell me otherwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they can't. <laughs> I, I do love the, the idea of like embracing the, right? The mm -hmm. and like it's, 
you know, Ecuadorian and Mexican mm-hmm. and, uh, and American. Same for you, right? Yeah. Um, it's really, really cool. I, I would say for me, different different stages. Like, you know, my dad growing up, um, even though we were in a Mexican household and my mom's Puerto Rican, like we grew up eating Arab food, Palestinian mm-hmm. food, which is really, really good. So mm-hmm. no complaints there. But, um, and it, you know, most of our... Um, Kind of like social structure. It was most of you know his family that was in Chicago versus my mom's. It was too cold to be in Chicago from Puerto Rico, right? Mm-hmm. So it was like most of my dad's family, and so it wasn't until I hit college that it was. And not that you know I grew up speaking Spanish, especially in the Mexican. You have no choice; you have to speak Spanish. My dad actually <laughs> met my mom in Puerto Rico. Um, before he was in Puerto Rico, he was in Colombia. So you've got you know. So we have you know. I've got Mexican. I'm sorry, I don't have Mexican cousins. I've got Colombian cousins. Um, so it's just you know. But once I got to college, is when identity really started like really sinking in. Not that I didn't. You know, I thought I wasn't aware of it, but... Um, I think you really didn't have yeah. to put a label on it until college. Because it was just a part of you. You were just like, this is how I lived, and mm-hmm. then people are like, what are you? And I'm like, that's a good question. Yeah! yeah, <laughs> like, yeah okay, yeah, how, yeah. Do, how do I express yeah. this without putting myself in that box that we explained mm-hmm. earlier? Yeah, no, that's true. That's totally true. I remember I was in when I was in college, I was in a sociology class, and the first, like, he said something like, oh, what percentage of the U.S. population is Hispanic? And what you know, what population? Uh, um, what percentage of the U.S. population is black? And I'm like, oh, we're like 50 percent, you know. And it was like not the case because that's like who was around. So mm-hmm. I mean, certainly your environment plays, right? Mm-hmm. It's certainly an input. Even though you said like you were growing up, you're like you felt more Ecuadorian. <laughs> I do recall you in the Selena outfit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <Halloween. laughs> yeah. So yes. tell me, like, what would you say, like? You know, what are your thoughts about that? Is that somebody like you admire? Like, mm-hmm. what's the connection there? Because I would love to hear about, you know, just the, the Latina women in your, in yeah. your lives that you Her, look up to. Yeah, for sure. That was like when the movie came out. Like, I have seen that movie hundred, like literally hundreds of times. And it's funny, like my cousin, she's like super into the courage and like she watches all of our games and she would absolutely love this. But like <laughs> we like one summer, we watched that movie every day Aww. for the entire summer and we like slept over each other's houses every <laughs> single day. Like we know all the songs, like we absolutely love her. Um, and yeah, that was just like, since I was little, I've like loved her and her music and everything. So that was definitely something okay, that okay. I stayed in touch yeah, with yeah. like my Mexican side through her. But yeah, that was just like Halloween came around and I was like, you know what? I think I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was like spinning yeah. image. It was so good. Thanks, I'm glad. It was a classic Selena look. <laughs> yeah. I have to confess, I've never seen the movie. Oh, because I know yeah. how it ends. And oh, I yeah. just, I don't like movies that make me cry. Yeah. But it is a great movie. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you, I can't, I can't, I know, I know what happens. <laughs> However, I will, like, one, one thread, and I know I'm, I'm going to ask you the question too. Um, one cool thing about the Salam movie when that came out, I remember when they were doing auditions for it. Um, anyway, and Jennifer Lopez got the part, mm-hmm. and there was all this, like, oh my gosh, she's even Mexican, mm-hmm. you know, and so there was, like, that uproar at the time, um, but I think she... From the clips and what I've heard, she, she did. Killed it. She did she a really, really it. good she job. It, yeah. And I will say, like, I, I think as somebody, I think she's a trailblazer. I think she's done mm-hmm. so many interesting things, like that others, and you know, triple threat dancer, you know, uh, singer, actress, her own clothing line before it was a thing. So anyway, mm-hmm. I, I do like, I do like J Lo actually quite a bit. Anyway, mm-hmm. who's, do you have somebody in mind that um, you kind of look at and say that's? Pretty cool. Not necessarily anybody famous. No. Yeah. I yeah. would even go back to my grandmother because she was always like our biggest cheerleader. Oh, yeah. She had six kids. She made that big family, and like I have probably twenty plus cousins now. Mm. And of course. We. Yeah. <laughs> it's normal. <laughs> and uh, we would always like get together, play soccer games on the weekends. We'd play each other, mm-hmm. and like she always inspired us. So she was basically the glue of our family. Mm. Yeah. She was always inspire us to get out there, come out, and even though she wouldn't be able to play she would always be on the sidelines always Mm -hmm. wanted to come to people's games and the last game she saw of mine was the national championship game when we won in san jose that was the the last game she was able to watch and so like i always know she's like always there for me on and off the field and knowing that she was like there for that last game Mm -hmm. was like unbelievable yeah Yeah. well that's an amazing answer (laughs) <laughs> and you know what I've learned um, is that she also supported your mom while she played soccer, Absolutely. and that was like, oh damn, because <laughs> that you know from I think I think I'm speculating that you like your mom and I are probably the same vintage, and so like you didn't see that as much like you know mm-hmm. growing up, right? So mm-hmm. like you're you know, what I was like badass like ahead of the time <laughs> to like encourage yeah you know, absolutely her young Mexican daughter to play soccer absolutely. 
She was the cheerleader, the cuddle bear, give oh. you hugs, <laughs> do a little back massages. So oh. she, she was always ready for that hug. There's some pretty wonderful women, especially in the older um, generation. I had uh, the privilege of meeting Dolores Huerta a couple weeks ago, and she was uh, the union uh, rights um, activist. The and uh, coming from California, I'm gonna assume you know this. And being Mexican, I know you know this, <laughs> which is the "Si se puede" chant. Yeah, like that was her. Like that was yeah. Dolores Huerta. You know fighting for um, farm workers in, mm -hmm. you know, California on the West Coast, Si Se Puede, like she was the originator of that. Anyway, so I'm, I'm at this event that I'm working, so I can't, like I gotta be cool because <laughs> I'm I'm not, like I'm behind the scenes, so I gotta be cool. And she walks in, she's 92 years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. She actually missed her flight the day before, so she took a red eye. So she just landed in Miami like that morning. She comes to this event two hours later and she walks in the room and you just feel like this awesome mm. energy. Mm. And I almost started crying just looking at her. <laughs> and I used to like make fun of people who would cry when they saw like the Beatles or Harry Styles or whatever. <laughs> I said, I'm trying to bring a younger like a younger <laughs> reference. And I, that was me like with the Lord's worth that. And I was mm. like, oh my God. And like, the, I think what's really, I mean, you know, she was fighting for farm workers decades ago, but to this day at 92, she is still, mm -hmm. you know, she's still fighting for, you know, people's rights and whether it's farm workers, you, you know, or just general union workers or women, because she's a huge um, feminist, like she's still going. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. but yeah, I almost cried. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> the Lord's worth is here. And then she left that same day. So this 92 year old woman, she flies oh, yeah. into Miami hangs out for a couple hours and leaves. Um, but the special thing about her was like, she looked, like even though she was a queen of the room, mm -hmm. and there was a couple other Latino celebrities that were in there, like everybody was like, ah, about her. And she would like look at you and like talk to you and like really like yeah. made you feel seen. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, ah, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, That's uh, very cool. Yeah, it was, it was, it was wonderful. I think I started the conversation talking about like NWCL and not seeing a mm -hmm. lot of Latinas in the league. At least that's my perception. Mm -hmm. You two are in it. You play in it. You've been around longer. You play. I feel like a poser because I never played. I've just <laughs> watched and enjoyed. Like, you know, is that changing? Like, is there more, you know, out there that, you know, are up and coming that we don't see? Like, I'm just curious about what your thoughts are on Latinas in NWCL. From my perspective and like the Mexican national team, I think we have anywhere between four to six people right now that are, you know, playing in the NWSL, which on a team of, you know, 20 to 30 is, is not that many, um, at least for the Mexican mm -hmm. side. I know there's a lot of other like Hispanic mm -hmm. heritage, but um, I think someone like Maria Sanchez, who mm -hmm. plays for the Houston Dash, like sh this is her first year back in the NWSL mm -hmm. um, after a while. And, you know, the things that, uh, she's doing over there in the communities that she's reaching there has been really cool to see and I think a lot of people in their respective teams the cool thing is that we are all on different teams so I think it's cool that you know there's at least someone from specifically the Mexican national team like we're all in, spread out on different teams and not just kind of all in one place um, but yeah I think you know it's a super competitive league and I think having people in this league and then going and playing on the Mexican national team brings like a very different look than what they're used to and kind of like Liga MX and how that's just a little bit different, like the style of play is different. Um, but yeah, I think we are still a little bit underrepresented. I think you might agree. Um, but from what I see right now, I think it is getting better and I think it's you know important to do things like this and have these conversations and bring a light to things like Hispanic Heritage Month and you know, today's Mexican Independence Day is just things yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, just things like that that I think as long as, even if there is few of us right now, as long as we continue to like lift that up and put it into the light, I think it'll only get better and attract more people, you know, with Hispanic heritage that will want to come play here. Yeah. I do feel like there's a sprinkle, mm -hmm. I think, everywhere. Um, I think it's got to make a big difference once we like diversify more throughout the years. There's got to be a lot more people, not just, you know, the Latinx heritage, but like African Americans, yep. Asians, mm -hmm. like oh, we got a lot mm -hmm. of people just coming in, and that's gonna make a big difference in the NWL, but also in the identification. Because like me, probably not a lot of people would think that I'm Mexican, mm -hmm. and so like actually having events like this to come out and identify and just share your story will also help see how diversified and how different people are in the league, like right now. But we have we have a long way to go. Yeah, yeah agree. I think. Um, Kiki, the fact that people are now going to know that you're Mexican, because 
We surprise! <laughs> uh, surprise! <laughs> um, I think you're gonna have a bunch more crazy fans, in the crazy in a good way, no, uh, <laughs> in a good way, in a positive way, and I'm excited to see that. I know, you know, there was, to me at least, there was a noticeable difference when Diana was announced oh, to absolutely. the courage, right? Like, Mexico fans go hard, mm -hmm. right, for, for their players, and I think Latino fans in general, for sure, but I can't, uh, I can't wait to see how that fan base starts responding. Uh, to, to you and I Probably not as big a <laughs> response to you. They're just, they're just gonna be begging you to come in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Literally. I was gonna say. And I'm gonna be right there. Yeah, with you. <laughs> they're, they're gonna be people asking you to go to like theaters. I'll be like, no, <laughs> Kiki. I mean, it's your choice. Clearly, it's your choice. But yeah, they're, although the, I feel like Liga MX fans are gonna be like, come here, yeah. and I'm just like, mm, please don't, please don't go anywhere. <laughs>